Thanks for joining us here at Sandals Church because here we are all about being real. So no matter where you're from, this is a place for you. And if you have any questions about the message today, you should check out our debrief podcast where Pastor Matt answers any tough questions and gives real answers. So make sure you check that out at debrief.show. Have a great week. It's good to be back this weekend, super glad, man. We're in a new series called Thankful. And here's the sad thing about our culture, right? It's already Christmas. We completely overlook Thanksgiving, why? Because as Americans, we're terrible at saying thank you, right? It's all about Black Friday, what's next, Halloween, skip Thanksgiving, it's all about Christmas. Look, I love Christmas, but I also love Thanksgiving. And what we wanna do is, we, one person, we wanna stop, we wanna stop and pause and say thanks. So let's start with me. I want to say thank you to you. I was anxious and worried and wrestled through all kinds of things through our last series. And as of now, we are at $10.3 million. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and, and pledges are still coming in. Offerings are still coming in. God is so good. And here's what I want to just challenge you. Some of you are anxious about your finances. Why don't you join me in trusting God? Because maybe he has a blessing for you. When you just trust God, you say, okay, God, obviously me worrying about it isn't increasing the size of my banking account. I'm going to trust you with this. So let me just say thank you. And let me say this. I love this church. And I love these people who give sacrificially so that people can have an opportunity to become real with God. And listen to me, if you're new at Sandals Church or you're a guest, man, I want to love you. But for you to do that, I need you to be here and I need you to hear what God has to say to you because God has a message for all of us. And here's the message today. You don't have to be overwhelmed with anxiety. You don't have to be. I want you to raise your hand if you, if you have a child or somebody that you love who's under the age of 25, raise your hands. Every single one of those people needs to hear this message. Let me tell you why. Because Generation Z is the most anxious generation in the history of America. You say, what are they worried about? Everything. Absolutely everything. They're anxious about getting older. They're anxious about getting a job. They're anxious about not getting a job. They're anxious about dating. They're anxious about not dating. They're anxious about dying. They're anxious about living. They are anxious. That's what America has produced. And here's what I want to tell you is God has an antidote for your anxiety. He has an antidote. He wants to help you. He wants to meet you right where you are. And I want you to know that this isn't just some sermon. This is personal. In my mid-30s, all of a sudden, I got slapped in the face with anxiety. I was a fairly confident person, self-assured, believed in myself, believed in God's calling. And then all of a sudden in my 30s, when I got three kids, a wife, a church, a job, a career, all of a sudden everything starts unraveling. And I was freaking out. And let me tell you something, if you're a Christian, I did what many of you do. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't bring anybody into my pain. I didn't bring anybody into my life because I thought I was weird. I thought something was wrong with me. I want you to write this down in your notes. Anxiety is normal. That's why the Bible talks about it. It's normal. Look, if you got a loved one and they have anxiety, don't tell them they're weird. That'll make it worse. That'll make it worse. Don't tell them to suck it up. That doesn't help. Don't hit them over the head with a Bible. That'll just hurt their head and their heart, right? It's normal. Listen to me. If you have anxiety, I want you to know it's normal. Look, if you don't have it, you're not normal. That's good. That's good, right? It's good to not always be normal. You're blessed, praise God you don't have it, but don't put people down who do. Try to be empathetic, try to be understanding. And that's my prayer for all of us 
as a church, that we would open our hearts. Listen, we've got a generation that's turned away from God, and here's the sad thing. Here's the thing that breaks my heart. God has the answer. Their colleges don't have it, their universities don't have it, and they don't have it, but God has an answer for our anxiety. He knows we have it. And what I wanna just pray is that God would use today's sermon to touch your heart, and maybe you would share it with a friend who's struggling. And by the way, you don't have to be young to struggle with anxiety. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, bless us today, Lord. Speak to us. Help us, Lord, to be honest about the things that we worry about, the things that we stress about, the things that we struggle with. God, let us bring our anxiety to you at the end of the message today. A real confession, a real offering, and say, God, here's my worry. God, help us to trust you in all that we have and feel, including our anxiety. We pray this in Christ's name, amen. Christians love to quote Philippians 4, 6, which we're gonna talk about today. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But I wanna quote a verse to you that the guy who wrote that wrote two chapters before. The same guy who said, don't be anxious for anything, here's what he says. For this reason, I am very eager to send him to you so that I may rejoice when you see him again and I may be what? less anxious. The guy who said never be anxious says, I'm sending this guy Epaphroditus to you, which, man, that sounds like a sickness, doesn't it? Like if I say I'm sending you Epaphroditus, you're like, oh, I'm going to Kaiser, right? <laughs> like if you're looking for a Bible name, I would not go with Epaphroditus, okay? That was funnier than that. You'll get that on the way home. <laughs> sounds like an infection, chronic infection. But Epaphroditus almost died, not of Epaphroditus, that's his name. I don't know what sickness he had, but he almost died. And people were worried about him. Paul was worried about the church that sent him. And so Paul says, I'm gonna send him to you so that I may have less anxiety. I'm worried about you. I'm concerned about you. Why does Paul have anxiety? Because he's a human being. He has feelings. We get worried. We get upset. We're not sure what to do, right? Like one of my least favorite verses is Jesus says this, behold, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. That makes me anxious. Some of you haven't prayed about that verse, right? That's scary. Wolves are like Velcro. I mean, excuse me, sheep are like Velcro. Wolves have fangs. <laughs> Think about it. We're sheep, they're wolves. Jesus, it doesn't seem right. I'm anxious. Jesus says, I know, I know. But you see, part of the way we win is not having all the answers, but trusting the one who does. So anxiety is normal. Look, if you're young and you have anxiety, you're normal. You're normal. If you're getting married and you don't have anxiety, you don't know what you're doing. I always get, I get concerned about the ones that have no fears. You do realize this is until death do you part. Right? It's always the overconfident ones that scare me. If you're having a kid and you're not anxious, you should be. You should be. If you have teenagers, you might be on medication, amen? <laughs> That's enough to make anybody go twisted, right? If you're getting older, your body doesn't work the way it used to. You can't think the way you used to think. You can't do the things you used to do. That's anxious, right? We had this guy in our church, man. He was worried somebody's gonna break in. He had a shotgun. I said, Jack, I'm afraid you're gonna shoot me. He was anxious, he was worried because as a man he had aged and he could no longer had the feeling he could defend his house, right? He, he was worried about these things. These things are scary. It's normal, it's normal. Here's the gift, here's the joy. Here's why we need to be inviting our friends to church. Here's why we need to get to know our neighbors. Here's why we need to get rid of all of our political rants on the internet and start talking to people about the answer. God has an antidote for anxiety. He has an antidote. Here it is. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't worry about anything. Remember, that's the same guy. Less anxiety. He's simply telling you the same thing he tells himself. I shouldn't be worrying. I should be trusting. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace. Underline this. Which exceeds anything we can understand. Listen to me, I don't care where your relationship with God is right now, listen to me, there's more. There's more. 
Here's why we're going to spend eternity with God. Because every day with God, God's going to tell, tell us good night, and he's going to say, tomorrow, there's more. There's more. Every single day. We're not going to get bored in heaven because God has something more for us each and every day. It says, then you will experience God's peace, which ex exceeds anything we can understand. I love this. His peace. Whose peace? His peace will guard your hearts. Do you know why so many of us have anxiety? Because we have unguarded hearts. We have broken hearts, smashed hearts, wounded hearts. They're not guarded. Your heart needs to be guarded by Jesus. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You see, here's the thing. We should, by nature, be becoming less anxious the longer we know Jesus. We should be. Anxiety to me is simply me trying to be God in an area of my life that I know I'm not God. Just go home and practice it. Try to solve something with your mind today. Just do it. Right? I hate it when people say, sending my thoughts. You keep that voodoo in your own head. <laughs> you pray for me. You know, I don't want your whatever it is on me. You just pray. You keep your nuttiness over there. Right? People, sending our thoughts and our prayers. No, just send the prayers. I'm going to send back the thoughts. <laughs> Why? Because his peace comes when I live in him and I grow in him. Here's my challenge. If right now you are overwhelmed with anxiety, where are you not trusting Jesus? Now, the truth is we're all not trusting him somewhere. Where are you not trusting him? So don't worry about anything. Let's start there. Why? Worry only makes it worse. It only makes it worse. It doesn't help anything. Does it? Has it, has it ever worked? You know, have you ever met someone who said, you know what? I used to not worry, but I started and life is good. <laughs> have you ever been up late at night? There's an infomercial. Three easy steps to be a better worrier. It doesn't exist. It doesn't work. And yet we all do it. We all do it over and over and over again. I know what I'm going to do. Worry. Anybody afraid to fly? Raise your hands. Does anybody have to mentally focus the entire time so that your brain power connects with the pilot's brain power so he or she can do their job? That's what I do. I tell my wife, don't bother me. I have to keep this plane afloat with my worry. A plane doesn't float, it flies. I know. I know. But you get the point. Worry only makes it worse. Philippians 4, 6. What am I supposed to worry about? Nothing. Why? It's not helpful. Jesus wants to help your life. So he tells you what doesn't help. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why? Worry adds stress. It does not relieve it. Here's my prayer for you tonight before you go to bed. Just make a list of things that you need to worry about. Tell me how you slept. <laughs> you ever started worrying about random things in the middle of the night? I wonder if we're being invaded. <laughs> my daughter's a six on the Enneagram, which means they worry a lot, sixes. We went to see a movie where there was an alien invasion. We were driving home from the theater. This is what she says. I don't feel like the government is prepared for an alien invasion. I said, add that to your list. So don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its what? Own worries. You don't have to worry about this. Tomorrow will have worries. There will be. You don't have to worry about traffic tomorrow. It will be there. <laughs> you don't have to worry about people's stupid decisions. They will make them. Right? So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. One of the ways to reduce worry is just stress out about now. Just right now. Try it. You can't even do it. Well, if I just worry about now, I might miss something. 
Listen, this is Jesus. Today's trouble is enough for today. And you know why he's an expert on that? Because he knows he's spending his whole life to die a miserable death. Here's what Jesus is saying. I'm gonna put that whole crucifixion thing out of my mind and I'm gonna focus right now on you. Praise God, he could do that. Don't worry about tomorrow. Like if you're a parent, just because your kid lies once doesn't mean they're going to prison. Like any husbands ever had to have that conversation with your wife? Oh, so-and-so did this and, and that means little Johnny's gonna be this and he's not gonna graduate and then he's gonna go to prison and then but and you're just like, he just missed a kick in the soccer game. I don't know. I don't know how we got to prison. <laughs> what happened? I call my wife's theory and then we're all gonna die. So that's where it always leads. Somebody misses a goal, the ref wasn't paying attention, the world is being invaded by aliens and we're all gonna die. It's just like, relax. Worry adds stress. How many of you are like, you're just like, you know what, I need some stress. I need some healthy dose of stress. That's what I want you to do Monday. Go into your boss, I need some more stress. I need it now, stat. <laughs> worry adds more stress. Here's the scary thing, you know what worry can do? Worry leads me away from God. Worry is meditating on everything but God. You are totally focused on everything but God. It naturally leads you away. Here's what Jesus says. He talks about some people, they come to church, they're exposed to the gospel, they make a decision to change their life, they, they, they accept Christ, they invite him into their heart, but it says, but then all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of life. I don't know if you've noticed, but you can only hold so much information in your brain. And some of you, you just love to add things. My life's already worried, but look at that. I'm just gonna add globalization. I'm gonna add this, so I'm gonna add that. And you guys are like, the, like collectors. You just collect everybody else's worry. Sooner or later, your heart is gonna be full of the worries of this life, and it's gonna be empty of Jesus. And why is that? Because when we choose worry over worship, ultimately what we're doing is we're violating the first commandment, which is thou shalt have no other gods. And worry says, I'm in charge, or at least I should be. And I'm gonna worry about that and that and that. Now, some of you don't believe that you're a worrier, so I'm gonna help identify you. Okay, I'm gonna call you out. Now, the first group, you're the easiest to identify. No one is gonna be shocked that you're a warrior. Why? Write this down. Because you freak out. Like, we know you're not okay. Why? Because you freak out. That's what you do. <laughs> you freak out. Now, here's the good news. At least those of you that freak out, you let it out. So you're, you're worried. You go on rants. You cry, right? You, you do a, a Facebook post. You just let it out. You're the person that announces, we're all gonna die. Thank you, thank you. The next group, man, this is like a lot of our men, we just blow up. Next thing you know, you're on the news punching somebody. Hey, that guy's got a sandal shirt on. Like, that's my worst fear ever. I can't tell you how many times. My wife always wants to watch the news and I'm always worried it's gonna be one of you guys with a sandals shirt on. <laughs> I don't know what happened, I just had to kill them all. Just being real. <laughs> you just snap, boom. Like you're more like the Incredible Hulk than Jesus. So I got someone's laughing like that. <laughs> okay, now you laughers. Some of you stuff it. This is you right here, watch me. <gasps> <clears throat> and you're just gonna get cancer later. That's what you're gonna do. <laughs> so cancer, come here. Heart failure, diabetes, come here. Let's just stay together forever. So yeah, somebody's married to that. <laughs> Some of us, right, we came from families, you got problems? No, we stuff it. 
That's what we do. Okay, this one's gross, but our vision is what? Be real. Anybody blow it out? That's what I do. My wife knows when I'm not okay because the restroom's not okay. I know that's gross, but it's true. It's true. See, some of you do this. Like you're rockets. And you're going to the doctor, something's wrong. And he's like, no, it's not here, it's up here. No, doc, I'm telling you, I'm gluten intolerant. He's like, no, you're just intolerant. Right? We, we all do that from time to time. My wife makes fun of me. We get in a fight, I take it, and I take it out on the restroom. Just because what Jesus would do. That's not true. If you're not a Christian, that's not true. I'm not saying that. I know it was gross, but it's real. Okay, next. We give up. You know how many times I've seen people just give up? I, I just, I, what, what's the point? Here's the point. You're not God. Don't give up to life. Give in to God. Here's the sad thing. Some of you are so close to ready to giving up on life, and you're so close to getting it right. But you only got a half right. You got to give up on life and give in to God. Here's what Jesus said. If you try to save your life for yourself, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for me, Jesus says, you'll find it. You're so close. You're so close. Some of you just want to give up. You want to give up on your marriage, give up on your kids, give up on your career. What's the point? Right? It's like you're 15. This might turn around. No, nope, never. Right? I mean, some of you, how long has this been going on? Two hours. <laughs> okay, maybe let's give it a good old-fashioned try again. So what's the solution? Here's what Paul says. Never be anxious. Why? Worrying is lame. Paul said it. Jesus says it. The Bible teaches it from start to finish. So what do I do? Write this down. Talking with God will make me feel better. You don't know what that is? It's called praying. It's talking with God. Some of you don't talk to God because you don't want to feel stupid. Let me ask you this. Do you want to feel better? Then start talking to God. Start talking to God. Man, here, here's the amazing thing. When I grew up in school, people made fun of God in the science classes. I don't know if you are aware of what's happening in our universities, but our scientists are beginning to go, hmm, maybe we were wrong. Because the more they're understanding about our DNA, about our bodies, about life, it sure seems like we're not an accident. Talking with God will make me feel better. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. What does that mean? Pray to God, and what's a supplication? What is it? It's a specific request. Some of your Bibles will translate it this way, with prayer and petitions. Like petitions for God are good. At the grocery store, I don't want to talk to you. I just want to get my pretzels and leave. You don't avoid the petition people? I act like I don't see them. <laughs> if I see a petition person, I'm praying for a Girl Scout, amen? <laughs> I'll buy a cookie, but I'm not signing that paper. But with God, it's good, that's a petition. God, we need this. Here's the thing about petitions. Why do people wanna get your petitions? Because more names on the list matter. So when you pray, involve other people. Get a petition. Hey, God, we're down here. Life stinks. And these people agree. <laughs> okay, some of you, you're laughing, but you need to read your Bible. Because when you read your Bible, it doesn't say Joe Schmo was praying and God heard him. Oftentimes it says this. The people of God's moans and groans made their way to heaven. Oh, God's like, you guys finally figured it out. It's lame without me. Okay. And he intervenes. Involve other people. Say, pray with me. 
Talking with God will make me feel better. You know why you don't talk to God? Because some of us have talked to people and that made it worse. Anybody ever done that? You talk to the wrong person, you're like, oh, I didn't know you were my gossipy friend. That's happened to me. You ever had somebody stab you in the back? Oh, well, what's happened to me? I got good news for you, that's not God. Listen to what Peter says. Give all your worries and cares to God. Why? Because he cares about you. Here's the good news. And I'm not knocking therapists, I've been to therapy, but you gotta pay them to listen. God's free. He's free. Matter of fact, not only is he free, but he paid so you could talk. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you on the cross. He gives you direct access to God. Listen to me. With Jesus, we got all the bars we need. We got a great connection with God. He's not gonna drop the call. He's not gonna, send, he's not gonna miss the call. He's not gonna send it to voicemail. Right, because voicemail's the devil. <laughs> Give all your worries and cares to God. Do you notice that Peter here assumes that we have worries? Here's the thing, we gotta give it to God. I don't know how scared my parents were when they raised me, but I can tell you as a parent, I'm terrified for my kids. I'm scared to death of the world that they're growing up in. What can I do about it? Nothing, but I can ask God. He can do everything about it. And I go to God. I go to God about their schoolwork, about their health, about who they're dating, and even about what they're thinking. Do you know why I do that? Because God cares about me. He cares about my kids and he cares about their souls. And I go to God and I say, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. But God does, God understands. Jesus said this, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Some of you, like me, you're battling anxiety and listen to me, maybe instead of wishing it went away, you would start listening to your soul. Here's what I learned for me. Anxiety for me, I'm not a doctor. Anxiety for me is my soul crying out for rest. It's saying the pace that I'm living, I can't keep up with. The burdens that I've placed on myself, I can't fulfill. The expectations that I've presented for myself, like let me tell you something, I can run anything. You give me a vacation, I can run it. I'm a three, that's what we do. We have expectations that are unattainable. Right? I'm an achiever. Jesus said, come to me, even you ridiculously dumb achievers. All of you who are weary and you carry heavy burdens, and Jesus says, I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. Now, some of you don't even know what that means, but a yoke is the brace that goes over the animal's shoulders. Here's what Jesus is challenging you with. He says, come and work for me. I know your boss is a moron. I know your employees are idiots. Jesus says, come and work for me and I will lighten your load. Why? Because he's humble and gentle at heart. And he says, and then you will find rest for your soul. Americans take more time for vacation than any time in history and we're more exhausted than we've ever been as a people. It's not our bodies that are crying out for rest. 
It's our souls. Our souls are not rested. So what's happening? Anybody seen this on the internet lately? People freaking out? People blowing up? Some of you haven't been on the internet. You're stuffers. Or you're on the toilet with me. <laughs> or you've just given up, right? That's what we see. And all of those are options if we don't turn to Jesus who says, maybe you don't have irritable bowel syndrome. Maybe you have a God complex. Maybe you think you have all the answers. Maybe you think you should have all the answers. Let me tell you, there's no greater freedom than discovering you're not God and that's okay. Jesus is God and he's good with the stress that comes with the job. Jesus had come to me. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble. Most people I meet that are overwhelmed with an anxiety and worry are not good listeners. And you know why you can't listen? Because all you can hear is your own worry. Stop what you're doing and listen to Jesus. Just listen. He's inviting you. What's he inviting you to? To learn how to live differently. Now more than ever in our American culture, to be a Christian means we must be different. We must be different. We must look radically different from the stressed out Americans around us, so much so that they look to us as peaceful people. How about this? Instead of over whatever, I should overpray. Some of you, when you're stressed, you overeat. It didn't make me feel good last time, but maybe this time the ice cream is calling. Some of you overwork. You try to work yourself to death so you don't have to deal with your stress and your anxiety. You overeat, overwork. Some of us overplay. I'm just gonna jump from one fun experience to the next fun experience, and I'm gonna pretend that this anxiety isn't real, like it's not gonna catch you. Listen to me, wherever you are, there you are. You know, I had a panic attack one time on vacation. That's a fun place to have it. It's better to have it at work. At least you're getting paid. <laughs> right? Had it on vacation. Do you know why? Because sooner or later your soul is going to be like, all right, we're done. And it doesn't matter where you are. You say, well, what were you doing that day? Taking a walk on the beach. In Australia. Well, what were you eating? I'm not kidding. Ice cream. <laughs> what were you doing? Watching the waves roll in. When the waves and ice cream and the beach send you into flip out zone, that's your soul calling. What's going on? That's check in time. I need to change some things. So we overeat. Some of you oversleep. You can't sleep your anxiety away. You can't. Some of you may never get this bad, but my anxiety would wake me up. I would wake up in the middle of the night with my heart racing so hard, I thought I was having a heart attack. It's scary. Overwork, overplay, oversleep, overeat. And we do things over and over and over again. And we never stop and say, God, I'm going to overpray this one. I'm going to overpray. But here's the secret. Here's the key. My anxiety is constantly rooted in what might happen. 
And here's one of the things that I've learned that's helped. And what's amazing is the Apostle Paul discovered this 2,000 years ago, wrote it in God's Word because it was inspired by God and delivered to us by the Holy Spirit. Paul said, do not be anxious for anything. Worrying will not help, but in all things, bring your prayers and your requests to God. Here's the key with thanksgiving in your heart. I'd love to pay for this research to be done, but it would be interesting to see how thankful Generation Z is. I don't know that we need a survey. I think we all kind of know. Not real thankful. Not real grateful for where they are. And the less thankful we become, the more anxious we are. Matter of fact, one of the techniques my counselor had me do is when I was having a panic attack, listen to this, he said, count backwards. Count backwards. I'm not even good at counting forwards. <laughs> count backwards. Some of us are anxious about the future because we haven't reflected on the past. Thank God for what he has done. It helps me even more. Why? Write this down. Gratitude changes attitude. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Has anybody ever seen an ungrateful child? Now, I know you would never want to assault a child, but you think about it, don't you? You think about it. When a kid's having a meltdown because they can't have their 18th cookie. You ever seen that kid? That poor mom in Target? And you're just like, I'd beat him. <laughs> yeah, you right? You love Jesus, but in that moment, you're like, that kid needs a whipping. <laughs> Some of us are a bunch of crying babies. I want more. I want more. And God's like, you didn't thank me for the 17 cookies. Why, as God, would he think an 18th cookie is going to fix your problem? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. Romans 1.21, I mean, I've heard this chapter preached so many times. I've never heard anybody focus on what Paul says here. It says, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And what happened to the world? What happened to humanity? What happened to people? It says they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. Let me tell you what doesn't help. It doesn't help to invent a God you want. You need to pray to the God you need, the one true God. So they began to think up foolish ideas of what was God was like. And as a result, their minds became dark and confused. They're not grateful. How many of you are alive? Raise your hands if you're alive. Did you say thanks today? Do you know how many of you would be dead if I was God? Every day. <laughs> every day. I would have roll call. Every, if I was God, every day there would be roll call. Who did not say thank you? Zap him, her, him, him, her. We'll see you tomorrow if they get it. Aren't you glad I'm not God? Amen. Amen. Right? See? That's why I'd kill you, because you didn't say Amen. Man, when we don't thank God, our minds go dark and we get confused. And guess what's happening to our culture? It's going dark and people are confused and they're freaking out. And we need to stop and we need to say, thanks. Thank you, God. Thank you. What should we thank God for? Let me give you just two ideas. Number one. Thank God that he hears me when I pray. Do you realize how amazing it is that God cares what you think? That God cares what you ask for? How many of you have ever find yourself in a position where, you, where you're not, you don't care about somebody? You're not gonna raise your hand, but you've been there. Think about it. Some of you, even with your own kids, you're like, I don't care. I don't care. Stick your finger in the socket. I don't care. <laughs> right? 
Fine, swallow the quarter, swallow the quarter, go ahead. I mean, all of us have got to a point where we just don't care anymore. We just don't care. And you don't believe me, man? Think about the next time you're stuck in traffic. You're more concerned about your schedule than you are the person whose life may have just ended. It happens. Thank God that he hears me when I pray. Thank God that I matter to him. Oh my gosh, I can't. Sometimes I don't even care about my own kids' stuff. He cares about me, cares about my wife, cares about my marriage, cares about my thoughts, cares about my fears, cares about my soul. And when you guys come and you worship like this, you're like, ah. Hey, thanks for doing that whole saving me from hell thing. That was great. <laughs> oh, and the air, the air that I'm breathing, that amen. Right? They rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for what? Hearing me. Whoa. When's the last time you said, God, thanks for hearing me? Think about that the next time you call some company and you get a dumb robot. Can you imagine if Kevin was like that? If you'd like to make a request, press one. I just want to talk to a person. Some angel's like, your call's important to us. <laughs> no, it's not. Thank you for hearing me. Next, thank God for what he's done for me. The man who was healed by Jesus fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. Do you know what Jesus did for you? He died for you on the cross, and here's why. Because he doesn't want you to spend eternity in an anxiously filled world called hell where everybody's worried the world's gone to hell and it has and there's no hope Jesus died on the cross for you he died for you and here's all that he asks you to do repent of your sins and say thanks some of you don't even know this but we took part in the Lord's Supper right before I came out and preached and the Greek word for the Lord's Supper is Eucharist let me translate it for you in English Thanks. We call it communion. Catholics call it mass. Some of you called it the Lord's Supper. The word is very, very simple. It's thanks. When we eat the cracker and we eat the grape, we're saying thanks. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Let's start there. Let's start there and let's see each week if we can feel a little bit better by thanking God for the good things he's done in our lives. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for loving us, for creating us, Lord, for giving us this church, Lord, for saving our souls. We're so grateful. Lord, help us right now for those of us who are bound by anxiety, overcome with worry. Lord, let us pray, and then let us pray specifically. And then, God, let us say thanks. God, thankfulness is powerful. Gratitude, Lord, will change our attitude. Lord, change our attitude. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.